an adoption plan. Part of the Ministry of Family of God Fellowship, the House of One in Faith offers a safe, loving environment. Call 352-687-8895 for more information. Well, that wasn't planned, uh, but gosh, that, that really works nicely with our next topic. Uh, Heather Burt is on the phone. Heather is a pregnancy counselor and the executive director uh, uh, with Bethany Christian Services, which is a global nonprofit adoption and child welfare agency. And today is March 7th, and it is Pregnancy Counselor Appreciation Day. We mentioned it this morning, Robin. I said to you, I don't know any pregnancy counselors. And you said to me, I know lots of pregnancy counselors. <laughs> So there's a divide between the men's world and the women's world, I think. <laughs> Heather Burke, good morning, Heather. How are you? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> where 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 are you right now? I'm outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Outside of Philadelphia. <laughs> well, thank you for being on the air with us. Do you know, um, the difference between my generation, Robin and I are 62, just to let you know, and my son's generation, he's 30, is that my generation, when the man's wife was expecting he would tell everybody my wife is pregnant mm -hmm. the 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 day the dad today says we're pregnant yes <laughs> <laughs> sharing <laughs> it's it's just always it's it's, very I, always, I always think that sounds so weird i don't are you young and i mean I, I, where are you on that gate i mean yeah. I, I the difference i'm gonna be 47 in a couple weeks oh you're right between the two. Ooh. Oh my god <laughs> happy birthday but do you, do you still look weird i mean does it still sound unusual when when a guy says we're pregnant it is a little difference yeah it is yeah, weird it's a little different. but but the good <laughs> but the good news about that is that means that there's a father who is happy that there's a baby on its way and, and i'm guessing a lot of the women you work with that guy just he bailed out he he did the deed and and, le and left town right well, it, it's it's getting a little better. I mean, Bethany really works to engage dads, you know. So we're, you know, when I first started my career, uh, let's just say a lot of years ago, <laughs> there weren't as many dads involved. But we're working hard to involve dads. Well, that's you know? good. So that's we, good. Yeah, we have more and more dads involved these days, which is better. So. In, involved in, in the whole process or involved in the decisions or, or, or both? Well, we're trying to, yeah, both. We're trying to engage them in the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. You know, we feel like dads are a part of the story from the beginning, and we want them to be a part of the story through the decision-making process and, and hopefully in the child's life, you know, in terms of, you know, whatever yeah. that decision is. Because and we feel like they're part of the process. And that's really great because when people are talking about not adopting and doing abortions uh, the women will come up and say this is my body i can do whatever i want with it and nobody else has any say and boy does that really burn me because there are two parents involved here and that really isn't good it does and you know ultimately for a child they have a right to kind of know the other side of who they are and that's what bethany is very committed to and so we talk a lot about you know women and men who are facing an unintended or unplanned pregnancy you know and i think that's I, i'm proud to be part of an organization that's committed to both women and men so and and for our kids we're committed to kids and our heart is for children and, oh, and that's yeah, important yeah. that it's part of kids knowing their whole story not just half their story and i think that's important so, so. Ta take us through your day what you 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 show up at work you th does somebody uh, say to you oh we've got uh lois coming in lois that's an old person's name uh we've got <laughs> we've got susan oh i don't know what's jasmine we've got jasmine coming in <laughs> <laughs> so typically we'll get a call or you know these days in age with social media you know you get a text message we do a lot through text messaging our pregnancy counselor might get a text message that you know somebody's pregnant they you know they might have just found out or they're further along you know sometimes we'll just get a hospital call even that says you know jasmine is just delivered and she's considering you know placing her child for adoption and so a pregnancy counselor will get this call and go meet with them and kind of talk through what their options are. You know, if, if it's a hospital call, obviously they've carried the term and, you know, they need to think through what their options are in terms of parenting or adoption. And adoption's really changed, right? You know, from earlier days, they didn't have any options. They didn't get to know the family or even meet a family or have pictures and updates and contact. And now it's very open yeah. where they can identify a family and have pictures and have ongoing contact through face-to-face -face visits and this relationship and 
And that's really important. It doesn't make adoption easier. It makes it more realistic to have this ongoing relationship. And we find it's healthier both for that birth parent, but more importantly for that child to know who their family is and where they come from. Do you, um, do you know that exact and, scenario? And, and, that exact mm-hmm. scenario happens in my family. We, we, I have some family members Hi. who have adopted, and the, the biological parents are still in the picture. The biological grandparents are still in the picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It, it is, uh, and, and, and I think it's a healthy thing. They, they look happy. Nobody seems to be right. angry yep. or, or um, regretting the decision. And I've seen it play out over and over again in my career because, again, I've been at Bethany. It's going to be 25 years this year. And I've seen it play out over and over again that these kind of relationships, that, you know, where it's built on trust and built on kind of getting to know each other, it's healthier for these kids, it's healthier for these birth families. And, you know, and that's what our pregnancy counselors do. They kind of get in there and they do this counseling and they help these moms and dads really think through what is the right and best decision for me and, more importantly, for this child. And so as they're facing this unintended pregnancy, which we're estimating about 37%, of of you know un, you know of births in our country are unintended. They're really helping them think through what are my options. I'm scared. I'm alone. What can I do? Mm-hmm. They've got a lot of people telling them what they should do, but they don't necessarily have somebody listening to them and thinking through what is the right decision. What are my options? What are the pros and cons of all my decisions? That's what these pregnancy counselors really do is help them think that through. And it's not directed. It's not coerced. It's not you should do this. It's what are you thinking? What what is it going to look like? What do you think is the right thing for you to do, not just for you, but for this baby? You know, what do you think this baby needs? Uh, was, and what's the right plan? Was uh, all of the information out there about uh, birth control and how you can go to, you know, your own uh, community's, um, uh, uh, you know, cl- uh, health clinic and get free birth control for the men and the women, why is there still such an epidemic of yeah, unplanned pregnancies. Know. Yeah, you don't. I don't know if it's not working. I don't know if people don't use it. You know, I think that's the question out there. But it's still happening. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I think that for whatever reason, it's still happening. Sometimes we get married couples. You know, that for whatever reason, they don't feel prepared to to raise the children that you know that they're in the situation with. Um, and oftentimes, it's single women that maybe didn't expect to be in the situation. Uh, we get kids that are a little bit older. You know, they're not always newborns. You know, sometimes mm. they might be a couple months old. Sometimes oh, gosh. Sometimes they're older kids. So, what so are, there's, there's all sorts of scenarios that we're facing with these, uh, with these situations. I don't really know how to ask the question. I'm going to use the word tools, and maybe there's a better word. But what are the tools you use to make the decisions that are the best? How do you know, in other words? How do you know what's best for the children and for the, the parents? We don't know. I mean, we help them figure it out. So we just use different counseling tools. We use different kind of decision-making guides. We help them look at pros and cons. We help them kind of consider their options in terms of parenting. You know, like if you were going to parent, where would you live? You know, who is Mm -hmm. your support system? Are you going to parent with dad? Are you going to parent at home? Are you going to go live with Aunt Sally out in Wisconsin? You know, I mean, we kind of just help them look at all the different scenarios. And when you help somebody look beyond just A and B or A, B, and C, kind of opens up their options when you present adoption. You yeah. know, some people don't even know adoption exists. You oh, know, my gosh. Think you're really marvelous in what you're doing. This is absolutely phenomenal. So you, you, you mentioned <laughs> you've done... up their eyes. You mentioned you've done it for 25 years. I'm just curious if you know any of the children. Uh, the, the, are they adults? Do you, do you know any of them? From I do. I get to see them every year up here. We have a, a walk-run event, and so I get to see some of the kids that I placed that were babies, and now they're, Aww. you know, in college or have wow. gotten married, and it's like, oh, my goodness, you've all grown up. So That's amazing. Yeah, I'm old. I tell my staff I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> That's, no, you're not old, but 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 you're, you're seeing the, the fruit of your labor right there is in front of you. It is. Uh, um, I'mPregnant.org is the website. I m p r e g n a n t. Sounds weird saying I'm pregnant, but <laughs> I'mPregnant.org. Uh, Heather Burt, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. We will be right back. Fox 
Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. A House GOP effort to dismantle Obamacare coming under fire from Democrats, as well as Republicans like Senator Rand Paul, who calls it Obamacare light. They end up leaving the individual mandate. They do nothing to help the consumer join associations to bring prices down. On Fox and Friends, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says the plan will leave far fewer Americans with coverage and that after seven years... You'd think the Republicans would have been able to come up with a better plan than this. This plan is a mess. President tweeting about the plan this morning, as well as Guantanamo Bay, saying 122 vicious prisoners released by the Obama administration have returned to the battlefield. It's unclear where he got the figures from, but a Miami Herald report believes it came from a DNI report and that the number of those prisoners were actually released under the Bush administration. Fox News, we report, you decide. In business, risks and rewards come with every decision, like moving to the cloud with Office 365. While its benefits include anywhere access and lower costs, cyber threats and user errors can quickly wipe out data and the money you save. Barracuda Essentials for Office 365 provide an added layer of security and functionality for threat protection, email migration, data recovery, and quality of service. Move securely to Office 365. Visit barracuda.com essentials to learn more. Napa know how. Spend $24 on anything at Napa this month, and you'll get a free Chase Elliott racing cap. You can spend it on oil. You can spend it on wiper blades. Heck, spend it on a year's supply of pine tree air fresheners. No matter what you spend 24 bucks on, you'll walk away with a free Chase Elliott racing cap planted firmly on your noggin. That's Napa know how. Napa know how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores while supplies last. Offer expires 331.17. Are you in need of custom screen printing, embroidery, or promotional items? Then look no further and come visit the brand new Legacy Team Sales. LTS is conveniently located off 17th Street next to Armstrong Homes in beautiful Ocala. We offer the best prices and highest quality products for your company, team, school, or nonprofit. Whether looking for screen printed shirts, embroidered polos, or travel team uniforms, you'll be sure to find it at Legacy Team Sales. Come visit our new 27,000 square foot facility. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff will assist you in every part of your custom purchase. LTS carries the hottest brands in the industry like Under Armour, Russell, Mizuno, Asics, Badger Sports, Gildan, Pacific, Ogeo, and many more. At LTS, screen printing embroidery is done in-house and we guarantee customer satisfaction. Stop by, give us a call, or check us out on the web at shoplts.com. Remember the name, LTS. Here are today's headlines from The Source, WOCA. Just two months after he took over, the head of Florida's jobs recruiting agency is stepping down. Enterprise CEO Chris Hart abruptly resigned yesterday, citing an ongoing conflict with Governor Rick Scott over the future of the state's economic development agency. He said, quote, This difference of opinion is of such a critical nature that I no longer believe I can be effective in my position, unquote. That statement was written in his resignation letter to Governor Scott. And it comes at a terrible time for Enterprise Florida as a bill pushed by State House Speaker Richard Corcoran that could shut down the organization was passed by a Florida House committee just last month. Scott is against the bill that would not just end Enterprise Florida, where he is a chairman, but also visit Florida. Hart took over as Enterprise Florida CEO on January 3rd. The previous CEO, Bill Johnson, was forced out. Florida cities are crying foul over a bill that prevents them from imposing new rules on business unless they get permission from the state legislature. Scott Dudley with the Florida League of Cities says so much for the concept of home rule. He says city governments should be able to do their job without micromanaging from the state legislature. Dudley says they're especially concerned about the measure preempting local governments from imposing regulations on business unless they get permission from the legislature. He said basically the legislature is just trying to direct cities and run municipalities in the way that they think they ought to be run instead of by the way that the citizens within that city think those municipalities should be run, unquote. Lawyers for the League of Cities say the preemption bill is one of the most egregious attacks on home rule they've ever seen in the Florida legislature. 
The University of Florida fired women's basketball coach Amanda Butler yesterday, parting ways with her after 10 seasons at her alma mater and on her 45th birthday. New athletic director Scott Strickland made the announcement four days after the Gators ended another disappointing season in the Southeastern Conference Tournament. Women's basketball is the only program on Florida's campus without a conference championship. Florida was ranked number 20 in the preseason top 25, but finished with a losing record for the second time in three years. Equally troubling for the Gators was that two of Butler's best players left the program in recent years. Eliana Kristanaki quit in December and Sydney Moss, the daughter of retired NFL star Randy Moss, left before the 2013-14 season. A four-year starter for Florida from 1990 through 1994, Butler earned her bachelor's degree from the school in 1995 and her master's degree in 1997. Florida hired her in April of 2007 after two years at Charlotte. In the last two weeks, archaeologists digging under the floor of a wine shop in St. Augustine have discovered the skeletal remains of seven people, including three children, believed to be some of the earliest colonists in North America. Last October, Hurricane Matthew damaged a wine shop on St. Augustine's Plaza. After the hurricane, building owner David White decided to renovate the space. According to a press release from the city, the floor of the building was built on a joist system constructed in 1888, which left the soil below relatively intact. White offered the city archaeologist Carl Hybert a chance to take a peek under the floor before the repairs began. After just a few shovelfuls of dirt, he found human remains. During the first week of digging in February, archaeologists first discovered an intact adult skeleton and an adult skull nearby. The bodies have been preliminarily identified as a relative.